Right, so this is the first tutorial I'm doing on Instagram um, as a cooking lesson and today we're going to do short crust pastry. I have actually this morning filmed this whole tutorial and then realised I'd recorded the whole thing without sound. So here we go again. Um, this is one of the requests that got sent through on Instagram, short crust pastry and pies. So if you have any other ideas of what you'd like to learn then just send them across to me. So. Let's get started. Short crust pastry. Um, it's one of the most basic pastries and it's often used for the base of tarts and on top of pies. The ingredients we need today are plain flour. Um, it must be plain flour, not self-raising flour. You don't want it to have any raising agent in it. The other thing we need is butter. I am using salted butter because it's all I have in the fridge and I can't just pop out to the shop because I'm in isolation. Um, if you can, use unsalted butter, okay? And the reason for that is you don't know how much salt is in different types of salted butter, and it might just be too salty for the pastry that you want. If you're using unsalted butter, you add a pinch of salt to your pastry. We obviously are not gonna add any salt today because it's salted butter. The only other two things I'm gonna add is an egg yolk and some cold water. So, the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my butter. We need 100 grams of butter. For pastry, you want to try and have cold hands and cold ingredients, even a cold bowl. Some people put their equipment in the fridge before they start working with it. Um, if you've got very hot, clammy hands because you're stressed, um, just run them under really cold water and then dry them really, really well. So, first of all, 100 grams of cold butter. It's a bit much. You really want to be exact with pastry. With other types of cooking, it doesn't matter so much. But with pastry, you really want to get it spot on. Great. Okay, so I've got my butter weighed out. And the other thing is the flour. So bowl onto the scales, make sure you put it to zero. Okay, we're going for 170 grams of plain flour. Put a little bit over. Okay, brilliant. So I've got my bowl of plain flour and I've got my 100 grams of salted butter. I am going to take this butter and cut it into cubes. I'm sorry about my nail varnish. Um, it's all chipped and horrible, but I cannot get any nail varnish removed at the moment. Um, so as soon as I'm allowed to go to the shop, I will, it'll be one of the first things I buy. Right, so we're just cubing this butter and as I said you want to handle it as little as possible if you've got very hot hands all the butter will start melting you want this really really fridge cold and you're just going to break it into the cubes into the flour if you wanted to use a um, Magimix or a food processor you can um, I'm making it by hand now just so that everyone can see how it's made without, if you don't have a machine, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's also quite therapeutic and as we've got plenty of time on our hands at the moment, we might as well make it um, by hand. So, the method we're going to use now is called rubbing in, the rubbing in method. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend the flour and the butter together using our fingertips, well our fingertips and our thumbs. Okay, so what you're doing is you're picking up the flour and the butter and pushing it through your thumb and your fingers and it falls back into the bowl. Okay, so I'll show you up to the camera. So you pick it up and push through and it falls. Okay, and this is called rubbing in. You're rubbing the flour in, sorry, you're rubbing the butter into the flour. Okay. And you can imagine if you have very hot hands, this is just going to melt all the butter into one big mess. So you want to keep it really nice and light and airy and cool. 
I'm just gonna keep doing this until it's all rubbed in. And what you want is the texture of breadcrumbs, of soft white breadcrumbs, okay? And I find this really therapeutic. Um, and hopefully you've all been picking up different hobbies while we've all been in isolation. Um, fresh pastry is something that people tend to be quite scared of making, but actually if you just follow a few simple steps, it's not difficult at all. Now, I'm gonna use this to top a chicken pie later. Um, I know chicken seems to be one of the hardest things to get hands on at the moment, but I, seem to, I have two breasts from the freezer that I'm gonna to use to make this pie. And also, um, someone said to me that they couldn't find flour the other day, but flour seems to be very available to me. But also, I feel like everyone's got an old bag of flour um, in the cupboard that they need to use up. So that is why I thought I would teach you how to make shortcrust pastry. Right, so we're getting there, lifting it up, making sure any lumps of butter you're pushing out, okay? And when you think you're nearly there, we're gonna shake the bowl like this. And some of the bigger lumps will come to the surface. I don't think we quite see that. Yep. Okay, so you see those bigger lumps? You're gonna check that those aren't lumps of butter because they might be starting to form lumps of pastry instead. But you just wanna make sure that there are no lumps of butter that haven't been rubbed into the flour. We're nearly there. So this is enough to make one batch of pastry which would top one pie or line one um, tart shell case. Okay, it's really important. There's no blocks of flour anywhere. Okay, and take your time. Right, give me one more shake. Check any of those lumps at the top aren't butter. Okay, brilliant. So I'm happy with that. Now it looks like this. Oh, drop some of my keyboard, never mind. Just gonna leave that there. Um, so now I've got my lovely breadcrumbs. You can't see any lumps of butter anymore. It's all been rubbed into the flour, okay? So I'm just gonna rub off my hands. And I need the yolk of an egg, okay? So I'm just gonna put the yolk, put the white in this bowl over here. Keep the white for later, maybe in an omelette or something. In these times, we've got to use everything. Right, so it's best if the eggs have come from the fridge as well. The colder the ingredients, the better. So the egg yolk into my mug. And then I'm just going to get really cold water from the tap, okay? So one tablespoon of really cold tap water in to my egg yolk. Right, now I'm gonna use this fork to mix my egg yolk and my water really well together. butter breadcrumb mix in here and you need a cutlery knife the reason for this is you don't want to overwork the pastry um, if we were making bread or pasta we'd want to work the dough really well and that's why you need it um, and that is because you're activating the gluten and that means that you get that really good texture of a chewy bread or chewy pasta the al dente pasta okay for pastry we want it really crumbly um, short crust pastry, you want it literally just so light. 
and crumbly and you won't achieve that texture if you overwork your pastry okay and that's the other reason for having cold hands and using a knife rather than hot hands so we've mixed our egg yolk and our water together gonna add it efficiently all in one go and with our knife we're gonna use it to mix it all together and you want to do this really nice and fast it's best if you have a nice big bowl, otherwise all of the flour will come flying out of it. So obviously different eggs are different sizes, um, so we don't know if everyone's egg yolk is going to be the same, but we will all start with one egg yolk and one tablespoon of cold water. If that's not enough liquid, we'll just add a little bit more cold water, but I don't think we'll need it. So I've done lots of mixing. And you can see it's turning into much bigger lumps. Okay, those breadcrumbs are coming together. So I'm gonna see how wet it feels with my hands now. If, it, if I feel like it will come together without any more liquid, then I'm not gonna add any more. I think it will. You can see that I've done that and it's I can bring it into a dough. Okay, so I am gonna move this out of the way. this onto the table and with as little touch as possible I'm going to bring it into one dough okay just pick up all these bits to fall them and then you're going to wrap it in cling film and leave it to rest in the fridge for at least 20 minutes this is for the gluten to relax and for the butter to firm up again As you can see, I have not kneaded that at all. I've brought it together, wrapped it in cling film, and I'm just gonna push it into a disc shape, as round as possible, so that when I go to roll it out, it's much easier to get an even round shape, okay? So this is now gonna go into the fridge for 20 minutes.